Hello, welcome to this video. I will be doing an album review of Slater's debut album, Troubled Paradise. I know I'm coming back from a hiatus of two months. I have been lazy, just lost the motivation to make any music videos. Not me making music videos, but okay, you get the point, album review videos. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, let's, let's move on. This is, like I said, Slater's debut album, and people might know her from her pre-debut singles, and her uh, debut mixtape, Slater, self-titled. Now, I don't want to spend this entire video comparing Trouble Paradise to the Slater mixtape, but the mixtape is pretty good, and they're both... I think, yeah, great representations of her and what she envisions, and she does a pretty good job of that. Okay, let's actually start. I actually really liked Troubled Paradise, and I would recommend it to those who are familiar with the hyperpop scene and just alternative pop in general, because she has this persona of a pop star, but like doesn't feel that real but like it's like you kind of know it it's in like in an ironic sense but like kind of not i really don't know how to explain it well but she's just there she's that girl and uh let's start with such an opener self-destruct produced and featured by wiki who yeah produces it it's fits the title. It's quite destructive, abrasive, and just out there. It gets your attention on this album. She comes off as like aggressive and dominant to the listener of lyrics like I eat boys for breakfast, dinner, and lunch. Only have fun when I self self destruct. It really is like i said the opener and let us say it it's definitely a grower because for first listeners that can definitely set people off and be like okay this is kind of weird but uh after a couple lessons i've come to dig it then it transitions pretty well to venom still having this aggressive type beat but it's much more electro electronic i'd say and it's uh, it's pretty catchy, has much more of like a faster flow. And the chorus is pretty hard. Like I, said, I like how she delivers the verses and how she has a pretty cool style of flow. It's kind of going into pop rap territory. I would say this album is kind of into pop rap territory, but I'm not completely sure. And then it just gradually gets more electro with Throatzilla. Now, this is such a track. She goes into how well she can perform that of... Okay, just listen to the track and just come back to see what this song means. Because there isn't much of that of a deep meaning. But she goes into detail of how well she does the... Uh, Those. Okay. And it's. I could definitely see that. Like, yeah, this song really displays it. It's also been produced by Guppy, and he has such a noticeable style of production. I think he pretty sh he shined pretty well, displaying that it is a pretty cool song, showing how catchy the hooks are, the beats, and just how hyperactive it is and what Slater is trying to portray in this song. Last of like what I'd say is like the somewhat aggressive out there section of the album would be Doghouse. Not me saying this again, but Doghouse is another catchy one. She 
has this uses these type of metaphors and similes of saying you in the doghouse and how authoritative she is. Uh, she portrays it pretty well. The beats, like I said, are pretty good. They kind of, I think it goes back to the more abrasive production to self-destruct and venom, but more towards the self-destruct side. And like throat still is like the most electro out of the four. Then we go to the interlude, which is butterflies. Now I know a lot of people want this to be longer, but I'd say it's like kind of an interlude for a reason. I liked it. I mean, yeah, it could have the potential to be extended to at least like two minutes or more, but overall, it was it's kind of cool. Like the intro, it kind of bored me to be honest because it was really it just felt very repetitive and lackluster but later when the vocals come in and the production just changes and just the style changes of the second half of the song it gets pretty good then it just ends abruptly and goes to the tr title track troubled paradise now troubled paradise this is probably one of my favorite tracks of the album uh, clocking in at four minutes, this is one of Slater's longest songs of her discography, I'm going to guess. She usually makes short songs ranging from one to three minutes, so this is pretty, this is a pretty cool decision of her to do. I really, Trouble Paired, it's like the verses and the chorus, they aren't that differential from each other, and they transition to each other very smoothly. And the vocals are just, just shine. She just shines through this song. And the production just feels so heavenly. I really like it. And this type of heavenly production goes on to Clouds, which really fits the title, because Clouds. Clouds is a pretty, somewhat chill, club-like song, but still got still has those catchy melodies that just... Feels like candy, you know? It's really nice. I think her most, one of her most popular tracks, which, you know, the consensus isn't wrong. I'd say I much prefer Troubled Paradise. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get much more to, like, the pop rock side of this uh, album, which would be, which starting with Cowboys. Cowboys, yeah, of course, has much, I think, a much more acoustic sounding uh, sound, but of course, not as acoustic as letters, but we'll get there. Has, yeah, pop rock, pop rockish sound, and the melody and the chorus drop were pretty catchy, I gotta say. And not much to say, but. Let's move on to Serial Killer. This is her second longest song of the album, being almost four minutes long. And to be honest, I think this is a grower for most people because I think I've heard a lot of people saying this is like probably their least favorite track and how it extends in the progression isn't like very strong as the others. I think it, it's, yeah, kind. I could kind of see that first listen. It, it's like, yeah, I could see why people would skip this, but, you know, a couple more listens into it, and I was like, okay, I'm starting to dig this, I'm starting to dig this. It has, like, a funky electro, much, it definitely sounds, like, quite distinct within the album. And it, it also, it also just makes me excited for the next track, which is, of course, another one of my favorites which is over this over this is a very catchy like 2000s pop punk pop rock avril lavigne type of sound with much more exaggerated electro and just exaggerated pop in general which is just slater's brand and i think she killed the type of pop punk sound and added her own style to it it's really catchy and i'd say Cowboy, and to be honest, I'm not sure if this is just me, but I feel like the melody of Cowboys and Over This, they're somewhat similar. I'm not gonna lie. 
But I like both of them. I like both of them. Then, to Villain, this is like her most hyper-pop track of the album, with like high-pitched auto-tune vocals, which is what uh, most people perceive hyper-pop is, and what hyper-pop mostly consists of. And to be honest, yeah, I could see why a lot of people might not dig this track, as it's, it's like kind of the most, one of the most, like, out there tracks. It just... It just gets to you eventually, I'll say. It, I, it got to the Hyperpop playlist, but like I said, Hyperpop's pretty ambiguous in how it started, but that's a whole another can of worms. And it takes a completely different turn off, off the ending with Letters. Letters has the, it's, a, it's the acoustic ballad ending, which is a really nice wrap up of this all together. Because it's this album is very varied and out there with how each track just stands out on its own. Letters does that in a pretty special way. It's, it's very sweet, cute, just a nice closer. And overall, I'd say Slater did a pretty done good job for her debut. I'm going to give this an 8. See ya.